Hello, everyone. Thank you again for joining us today. Uh, we are diving into pharmacist e-care plans and the medication-related interoperability models that shape the future of independent pharmacy. Updocs is delighted to welcome two excellent speakers. Um, I'd ask if you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them into the chat function on GoToWebinar. We will have two opportunities for Q&A, one at the conclusion of Shelley's presentation and again at the very end. So there will be plenty of opportunities to get your questions answered by our experts. Additionally, we are recording today's presentation and the recording will be sent out to all attendees after. I know that we are all very busy, so I'll go ahead and introduce today's first speaker. Today's first featured speaker is Shelly Spiro. Shelly is the Executive Director of Pharmacy HIT Collaborative, which aims to assure pharmacist services through health IT is accessible and can connect and support national quality initiatives. Shelly is active in national pharmacy associations and standard development organizations such as NCPDP, HL7, and X12. She's also an American Society of Consultant Pharmacists past president and the 2014 Archambault Award recipient. She earned her BS Farm degree from the University of Illinois College of Pharmacy and is a national speaker on topics relating to various professional pharmacy, health IT systems, terminology, and electronic prescribing. Everyone, please help me welcome Shelly Spira. Shelly, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Janelle, and I just want to personally thank UpDoc for all their support. They are a, an associate member of the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative, and it's a pleasure uh, to uh, speak about uh, the pharmacist B care plan at, on this webinar. Do you go to the next slide? So on this webinar, we're going to talk about um, uh, payment models and uh, medication-related data, how we capture that, interoperable standards to capture the pharmacist patient care services, really what is a pharmacist electronic care plan, how do we implement it for things like chronic care management and receive payments for that as, as pharmacists, and then some of the next steps that we have to do in relationship to the standard. You can go to the next slide. These are our learning objectives, and we um, will talk about uh, throughout this some of the standards that are available through NCPDP and HL7, how we build models, and especially how we talk about the pharmacist electronic care plan in exchange for chronic care management. Go to the next slide. So what is an electronic care plan? Can you go to the next slide? Uh, an electronic care plan is really an electronic structure. It's a form. It's just a form in an electronic, uh, used electronically. But it, it's standardized. And they use a, a standardized language called uh, consolidated CDA or what we call CCDA. And we use this very similar to how we use any other type of standardized form like electronic prescribing. We use the NCPDP script standard, or even as you are sending an email, the way that that information is being sent has uh, certain standardization. But with the pharmacist electronic care plan, or with an electronic care plan, this is a very comprehensive form. It's, it's very sophisticated. And all of the consolidated CDA documents that come out of HL7 use a building block concept, and we call this pass the Lego blocks. And what they are within the care plan and within these electronic structure documents, there's sections, and these sections are standardized, and they can be broken apart. So if you think of a Lego object, like a robot, uh, you can build that robot with different building blocks, such as Lego blocks, but you could then break it apart and those blocks become reusable as information within your electronic health record system. So you go to the next slide. So the, an electronic care plan sections are, they include health concerns, observations, interventions, outcomes, and goals. This is what makes it a very comprehensive 
it, it is very sophisticated from a, a ability to capture a, a huge amount of information in a very structured way without having to share your entire electronic health record with somebody else. So case managers use electronic care plans in a storyboard manner where they will take many different electronic care plans, put it on a longitudinal timeline for that patient and begin to see where that patient goes in and out of different practice settings or have different encounters with different providers such as a dietitian or a nurse or a rehab or uh, your dentist. These are all different types of care plans that can actually be captured for case management. The benefit of adopting the pharmacist electronic care plan, especially for the independent community pharmacies, is where we really began to focus on the work that we're doing with the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative and where Updoc has really played an important role in uh, being a solution to help us exchange this type of information. If you can go to the next slide. Why would we even adopt an electronic care plan? And we do this because there are different payment models that are out there today and a movement to newer types of payment models. But you can go to the next slide. So where we are today in terms of uh, where, how we capture information, we capture information mainly through the, the pharmacy claims process. Most of you who are working in a pharmacy would understand this, especially because most of the data that we collect within pharmacy systems is in relationship to prescription dispensing data. We can do some value-based measurement in terms of adherence or formulary management, and there has also been an, a move to merge the pharmacy claims data with medical claims data to really show value. Where we see for our pharmacist service payment, it's a little bit different. And this is a problem because pharmacists are not recognized in the Social Security Act as a provider. And many of the payers utilize CMS is Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. They use CMS's stand uh, payment models as their payment models. And therefore, they don't really recognize pharmacists as providers. That doesn't mean that pharmacists aren't providers. It's just in the payment models, they're not recognized. The areas that pharmacists are are areas like MPM payments, where uh, this is part of the Medicare, CMS Medicare Part D program. Um, and there's a movement to go to the enhanced medication therapy management model. It's a, it's a five year, five region, 11 state pilot to uh, capture more comprehensive information that pharmacists use in, in documenting patient care services. So today, value is difficult to measure, especially for pharmacist services. And so there's also a movement to, to move towards creating electronic clinical quality measures by providers in a standard way. So as we move to more value-based payment models, these are more team-based models, and we have to have good clinical documentation in order to be part of that value-based model. Go to the next slide. So uh, Health and Human Services has come up with four categories that they're moving to, moving away from a fee-for-service model to measure payment and qual to, uh, to, uh, for payment and based off of quality. And they have the four categories. And the categories move us all the way to creating a value based off of population-based information. And this is why clinical documentation is so important, especially in the pharmacy arena, as we'll talk about as we move forward to the slide deck. You know the next slide? This is just a picture of the previous slide, so you have a vision of where HHS is going in terms of payment models. 
2016, you can see that darker blue circle is where we have 30% of the payment from CMS is attributed to categories um, three and four. We're still, we still have uh, quite a bit of activity taking place in categories two and four. Now, as we move towards the 2018 and beyond, that blue circle should become bigger and encompass the whole model. So it, what that means is basically today we're still in a fee-for-service payment model, and these are just ways that we're beginning to move towards a much more value-based payment model. Should you go to the next slide? One of the areas that CMS has focused on is chronic care management. And the reason they focused on chronic care management, this is where the high-risk patients are, and high-risk patients use the majority of our healthcare today, dollars. And so those healthcare dollars are attributed to these high-risk patients. And CMS began to look at what is the best way to do care coordination with these high-risk patients who are moving in and out of different practice settings seeing multiple providers, and being able to do case management on these uh, patients related to chronic care. Chronic care has to be at least two or more chronic conditions. And you need to and also have a way to follow the patient longitudinally through these multiple care settings. This becomes really important because in a, what CMS and HHS is trying to do is trying to engage the patient in their care, trying to put out regulations that are more person-centric in their care. Instead of focusing on the providers, they're beginning to focus on the patient and the overall care of that patient. And to do that, you need uh, chronic care management. They're on the uh, CMS website, they have some great information. This happens to be on their medical learning network and really gives you a good overview of what is chronic care management and how to bill for chronic care management. There are some of the requirements to reach it ultimately, although some of them aren't, um, they, they haven't implemented everything, but it's important to be able to use a certified electronic health record to come up with a uh, uh, working in a team-based approach to encompass transitions of care into the model of chronic care. Most what we focused on several years ago was beginning to document transitions of care and just focus on transitions of care, but that's such a small piece of chronic care management. That's only when the patient goes from one place to the other. The reason we did that is because of the penalties that were given to hospitals for hospital readmission. So folks began to focus on transitions of care. But if you look at the bigger picture of where, the, where our large healthcare dollars are going, it's really in chronic care management, and that's why transitions of care is part of that overall picture. If you can go to the next. Uh, so how do we capture infer data, in medication data, related data into the system? So several years ago, uh, the Joint Commission of Pharmacy Practitioners, uh, which oversees uh, the practice of pharmacy, and that's an organization that's been around for over 30 years, decided to document how, or come up with a process of how pharmacists should document those patient care services. So they came up with the, a workflow process for pharmacists, and now we begin to train our pharmacists as they're getting their PharmDs in pharmacy school to begin to document this in a standard way. This is not unique to pharmacy. Pharmacy sort of behind the curve, where you, as an example, you went into a physician's office, they take your height, your weight, your blood pressure, so they're doing all of those pieces in a very standard way. Then you, they review your problem list, the symptoms, the symptoms that you've gone to for that encounter, that leads all the way up to a diagnosis. That's a workflow process that gets documented to drive those um, providers or that physician to use the electronic health record in a very standard way. Pharmacist process is a little bit different because we don't lead to a diagnosis. Can you go to the next slide? 
So our previous landscape in terms of what has been happening of the movement and the data capture of this information um, is the problem that all provide all systems throughout the United States, health systems throughout the United States face. They don't talk well to each other. And this is another good reason uh, for UpDocs. UpDocs itself really helps solve that movement of information from one, one provider to another. So we have clinical data that's documented in an electronic health record. We have medication data that's captured in a pharmacy software. We have lab data that's captured in lab software and sometimes makes its way into an electronic health record. You know, and all, although all these standards exist, the, the standard data set of information really needs to be standardized to really meet our interoperability and standardized reporting concepts to meet these value-based payment models. Let's go to the next slide. So where we're seeing change within pharmacy systems with, with now being able to capture clinical information following the pharmacist patient care process workflow using standardized clinical terminology such as SNOMED CT and standardized laboratory and genomic data uh, through the collections of using consolidated CD80s electronic structure documents through a health information exchange or a health information network. And this is where UpDocs really comes in because it really helps with that solution of being able to capture that information, exchange, share that information in an interoperable way. And the, the standard data sets that we're using really came out of the work that we've done through the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative in identifying uh, over 500 clinical terms that, are, that have been identified for, for pharmacists to use in, the, in that clinical documentation. Uh, these uh, clinical terms are uh, put into value sets or clumps of terms. So we have over 100 value sets that have been uh, defined by the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative and they are in the publicly available National Library of Medicine Value Set Authority Center. There's information on the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative website, which is www.pharmacyhit.org, uh, under our resource page on how to get your UMLS license and how to get access to that information. Maybe we can have another webinar or more detail about that if needed. Go to the next slide. So value sets have two functions. Number one is to exchange the information in an interoperable way. As a pharmacist, if I provide patient care services and I want to send that information to a physician's electronic health record, whatever I'm sending, if I put codified data in, that data is easily read, can be easily read by the machine I'm using. Without it, if I use text-based information, the machine doesn't always recognize text-based because I might put on their um, an abbreviation of tab for tablet, and I might use another term as pill, somebody else might, the machine doesn't really recognize that as well. And this is why we use standardized terminology. The other area that we use this is for reporting, for quality reporting. This is a, a really important piece of why we need to standardize the information within our system. If you can go to the next slide. So you can see in this picture, and this is just a picture to really show how value sets are used today, and we don't see them being used that much within pharmacy. Now the, the pictures that uh, are sort of boxes that have different colors in the center uh, between the arrows are is a, uh, an example of what would be a consolidated CDA or this electronic structured document. So currently physician's office, which is on the left side and hospitals on the right side is different software, they're already exchanging these types of electronic structure documents, uh, such as the discharge summary or patient care summary or continuity care document. Pharmacy has not been as connected with, uh, with, these, with this particular model. 
So you go to the next slide. So really one of our goals is how do we share and report medication-related data in an interoperable standard way? Go to the next slide. And in this picture, again, we're seeing the center, which is the these electronic structured documents or the CCDA or an electronic care plan. And we see it being shared. And now we have the pharmacy connection, and thanks to the folks at UpDocs who have helped us get pharmacy integrated into the model where we are able to share this information between the physician office and the hospital as an example, but there are others that are involved in, in this. So we began this work to make a much more integratable model using the pharmacist electronic care plan as part of an office of the National Coordinators or ONC high impact grant. This is a, a grant where we were able to work with community care in North Carolina in a model to test this on how pharmacists can capture standardized electronic structure documents or the pharmacist electronic care plan with this codified information within uh, that's captured within the document and being able to share it with um, a payer as an example. So you can go to the next slide. And the objective of this, in terms of reporting for value-based payment, we see in the current models that are taking place that value sets are actually being created and shared with physicians, offices, and hospitals with the payer to meet those value-based payment models. But on the side are the pharmacies, so they're still using proprietary data sets. And so the, if you go to the next slide, our objective is really to how do we now incorporate pharmacy into sharing the value sets that we've defined through the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative and integrate that into the model all the way to the payer, which also adds a way now that we can standardize the reporting back to the payer for our electronic clinical quality measures to meet those value-based payment models. If you go to the next slide. So we do, we, we utilize standards. The standardization using credit standards, and these are ANSI credit standards through the American National Standards Institute, is a really important component to be part of this overall healthcare model that will eventually lead us to these uh, team-based care models. And we use for standardized terminology, we use SOMED CT, which is part of SOMED International. Uh, the National Library of Medicine oversees it for the U.S. realm. Uh, we have, through the Pharmacy HIT Collaborative, have done quite a bit of work for the last uh, 10 years in relationship to uh, efforts and resources for SOMED CT. And then we're also working with the Joint Commission of Pharmacy Practitioners to standardize the terminology, the definitions, to make sure that when we say a value set for medication therapy problems, that value set is related to a definition of what is a medication therapy problem, to make sure all of those codified terminology fits into the definition of a medication therapy problem, as an example. Now, there's other terminology that's being used, such as our norm, LOINC, and we have uh, also standardized electronic structure documents that we're using today, such as the CCD, the discharge, and patient care summaries, especially on the collection portion. If you go to the next slide. Now, there are other accredited standards that are out there. Uh, of course, in prescribing, using the script standard, the claims for our pharmacy claims, D.0, NCPDP D.0, and for your medical claims, like the 12, 837, with CMS 1500 forms. These are all claims based on a fee-for-service encounter. Using the, uh, the next level of standards, using these electronic structure documents, we've used the consolidated CDA or the CCD that's pretty commonly exchanged or a discharge summary, but the idea now is to use this very comprehensive electronic care plan, especially the pharmacist electronic care plan for pharmacy. And 
We do this using the standard electronic structure documents, consolidated CDA, but we also are, have the ability to use fire resources. And that could be a whole other webinar on just what is fire. Fire is fast healthcare and operability resources, which sort of has pre-programmed blocks of information that gets pre-codified into the system because when you have one codifier, one programmer coding in one language and another one programming in another language, it has a tendency to have anomalies or changes in it that aren't consistent or standardized. So fire helps us standardize and constrain uh, these electronic structure documents. We, if you go to the next slide, we have actually entered uh, the information on the pharmacist's electronic care plan onto the ONC interoperability proving ground. This is where all the projects that are pertinent to health IT are really captured. It's a great resource, especially if you want to look for pilots that are taking place in your area that you might want to coordinate with it. So I encourage you to go to this. There's also a lot of information on healthit.gov. We do have our pharmacy care plan project on there that shows uh, the different pharmacies, uh, pharmacy systems that have uh, been trained to and are on their way to adopt the pharmacist electronic care plan. Let's go to the next slide. So adoption of the pharmacist electronic care plan really started with the pilot at Community Care in North Carolina that really wanted to have a standard way for their almost 300 pharmacies to submit uh, patient care information in a very standard way. That was done through their own CMS innovation grant, but now they're ready as they finish that grant to move uh, the concepts that we tested in Community Care in North Carolina to the other state, the other United States. And so they formed a community, the Community Pharmacy Enhanced Service Network, which is a way to really help community pharmacists begin to build payment networks where they can now be part of value-based payment models. So 23 system vendors uh, have gone through um, this training and uh, these were not only system pharmacy systems, they were also case management centers. They did a proof of concept on the exchange, Pediatra in North Carolina as of October 2017, that was like oh, seven months ago, uh, which <laughs> they've increased significantly. I don't have newer numbers to give you, but there were greater than 3,800 completed pharmacist electronic care plans from over 100 different pharmacies that sent the completed care plans to Community Care of North Carolina. And these vendors also utilize the FIRE implementation guide for, for this to share the electronic care plan, which again made it very standardized and constrained and an easy way for Community Care of North Carolina to document their value-based payment model to pay those pharmacists for those services. If you go to the next slide. So what are our next steps? So our next steps are the, the pharmacist electronic care plan is and, and the fire implementation guide. What is, although it is part of a, a draft standard for trial use, it's recognized as part of the ONC 2015 certification requirements it still needs to be evolved. It needs a new version because we learn things out of the pilot that we need to add into the standard. And so we're in the process of going through the standard process to update uh, the implementation guide. We also want to link the value set to the care plan to further constrain the standard so that we can do better quality measures and also eventually lead to uh, national and population health information to meet that overall CMS payment model. And we need to be able to share the pharmacy electronic care plan nationally with other providers. And this is where UpDocs really comes in because they're part of that model in sharing the pharmacist electronic care plan because that's what they do. That's their, their, their thing. And Lastly, is really to expand the care plan standard for chronic care management. Um, this would be supporting the, the provider and pay, 
the provider and payer payment models for value-based payment to really begin to use discrete and codified data embedded into this information so that you don't have to access somebody else's electronic health record. You should be able to pull out the information that's pertinent to that provider so they don't get the data overload of information. And it also allows those system vendors of the, on the receiving end of the electronic care plan to utilize the information, to put the information in a way that the providers can utilize it better dashboard information or other information because it's, it's very usable information. And then most importantly, to get outcomes based in electronic clinical quality measures out of the system. So those are, those are some of the next steps that we're focused on. And if you go to the next slide. This is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me, and I will turn it back over to Janelle. And I just want to thank UpDocs for letting me speak about this topic. Perfect. We're going to go ahead and introduce our second excellent speaker for today, Sean Ramsey. Sean is the president of UpDocs, bringing more than 20 years of executive level experience in information technology, sales, and marketing. Sean is an expert in bridging the gap between independent pharmacists, prescribers, and other members of the care team with our solutions, which exist to drive collaboration, engage patients, and improve compliance. Please welcome Sean Ramsey. Thank you, Janelle. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, thanks again to Shelly for all the great information that you've provided us today. Uh, so just jumping right in, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, we have a, 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 a product here called uh, UpDocs uh, Pharmacy Connect, and so we are a leading care coordination suite that helps independent pharmacists uh, be able to communicate better with the other medical professionals within your community, as well as ultimately with your patients, the customers that you serve every day uh, inside of your pharmacies. So what we're trying to do is help you find, one, new sources of revenue in addition to uh, prescribing. Uh, UpDocs Pharmacy Connect, you know, we've built a a web-based care coordination suite that we want to help independent pharmacists be able to communicate better with the other uh, medical providers within your community and then also be able to interact with your patients, ultimately the customers that you serve every day. And so the way we try to help you do this is through finding you new sources of revenue in addition to the wonderful work that you do every day uh, from the prescription side, looking at new ways, as Shelly had to listen or talked about, uh, to be able to do more of the clinical services. We certainly want to help you make your pharmacy more efficient, even in things as mundane as trying to get rid of all the paper that you have to deal with every single day within the pharmacy. And then certainly we want to help you with things like uh, the chronic care management that Shelly had talked about and how do you actually be able to improve that care coordination for that patient and become more of a, a larger team of folks that are trying to help uh, the ultimate patient, whether it's the physician, it's the pharmacy like yourselves, it's the family members who are obviously very uh, invested in, in caring for that patient as well. And then finally, be able to engage your patients online to help supplement all the valuable time that you spend with them, uh, consulting with them face-to-face -face when they come into your pharmacy, whether it's to pick up a prescription or uh, to be able to do a, uh, an MTM or, or a MedSync, things like that. So next slide, please. Uh, and so looking at what Pharmacy Connect can do for you, we, through all the tools that we offer, we want to help you to be able to uh, be able to reach out to other folks within the medical community as well as the patients. And so. One way to do that is by being able to be, uh, build custom online forms. And so this can be even for patients, or also it can be uh, to help you drive additional revenue. So for example, if you want to do a corporate clinic uh, for vaccines, you could have the HR director send out a link to these forms online, have all the employees fill this information out ahead of time so that when you come on site to administer the clinic, you've already collected all that data that you need in order to be more efficient to get through those large number of vaccinations that you might be administering. Uh, to those uh, employees. Certainly want to help you with uh, being able to exchange the information. This really goes back to a lot of the standards that Shelly had talked about that have been put in place to be able to share the clinical information in what we call a structured data way uh, to send that information back to the actual physicians so that they can consume it in their own electronic health record systems uh, so they don't have to do all the retyping of the information themselves uh, when you're coordinating with folks within your community. Next slide. So as you look to become and move into becoming credentialed uh, as a medical provider by the payers in your state, or if you're simply going to do a collaborative practice agreement in conjunction with a physician under their direction, 
Now, some of the questions that you might want to ask yourself is, how do you communicate these clinical findings that you uncover when you're meeting with a patient? Um, how do you also be able to um, share information about the drug therapy problems? Or you also can do risk assessments, whether it's just a general uh, behavioral assessment or well, a health and wellness assessment. Um, as well as being able to communicate how well the patient is adhering to the drugs uh, that, the pharma, that the physician has prescribed to them. Uh, and then finally, just being able to also uh, communicate directly with uh, the patients as well. So a lot of things to think about. Next slide, please. Uh, as you're looking to be able to, to broaden your scope of practice and be able to communicate with others in your community. From the provi provider's or prescriber's perspective, as Shelly had talked about, you know, they will now be able to share this clinical data with you and not fax you a bunch of background information off of a patient's chart. It will actually be able to come in to your system as structured, once again, structured data that you can take action on. And the reason why this works is every single electronic health record vendor in the country over the past seven years had to adhere to some federal standards to make this all a reality. And so finally, we do have one universal way in place to be able to share all these medical records uh, in a structured fashion back and forth uh, without, once again, using the, uh, the fax machine. From the pharmacist's perspective, uh, this is where you're able to now be able to communicate back to those physicians once you've actually seen that patient, uh, either on your own or in conjunction uh, under a collaborative practice agreement, and share that, once again, as data that comes directly into their electronic health record. Certainly, we also can help you with the faxing side of things as well. Uh, but this could become important, especially if you uh, engage with others in your community, and there's some additional programs, like a transition of care program, where once a patient has been discharged from a hospital, if you're able to, uh, even over the phone, meet with that patient uh, over the phone or in person within 48 hours and do something as simple as a med reconciliation uh, and then see that patient within one to two weeks, there are very specific billing codes that you can take advantage of either on your own or in conjunction with a physician uh, where CMS will pay you an incentive amount to be able to do those things because they feel like those transition points are very critical to where things can get messed up potentially. Um, and so it's just a great way for you to be able to meet with that patient. You know them as well as anyone else. You see them probably 12, 13 times a year in your pharmacy. And so being able to review the medications that were given to them in the hospital, just to do a double check uh, to make sure there's no contraindications of what's being prescribed to them. Uh, and you can use these tools to be able to better communicate that information back uh, to the physician that they also see. And then finally, ultimately from the patient's perspective, your customers, we want to be able to allow them to be able to engage with you online uh, once again, in addition to all the things that they do when they come into your store uh, to be able to pick up the prescription. So we give them the ability to go online and schedule appointments as you're starting to move into more of these clinical services and you want to maintain an actual calendar uh, to be able to plan your day and your resources better. We will be able to get you to allow them to be able to schedule appointments online. Once again, fill out these forms online and just in general be able to communicate back and forth with you electronically and even share documents uh, with you as well. Next slide. So as we talked about, just some of the key features uh, that we do up, offer at UpDocs Pharmacy Connect. Certainly want to help you uh, get out of the paper-based world. Uh, there's still uh, amazingly a lot of physical fax machines around, uh, and so we can make the, simply make that process go away um, and stop having to deal with all the toner and paper and the fun that comes along with that. Uh, but then also going beyond that and really focusing on workflows within your operation, especially if you have multiple locations and how do you share information back and forth. Um, or have a central office that might handle a lot of the administrative aspects of your, of your pharmacy group uh, and be able, to, be able to do things more efficiently from that perspective. And then certainly uh, everyone has a, has a cell phone these days, um, even, even folks like my dad who's 77 years old. Uh, so how can you easily communicate with them in a way that they're most used to and a tool that never leaves their side, as we all know. So be able to quickly send text messages, even ad hoc ones, uh, to your patients just to get questions answered um, or collect more information. We've talked about the forms and then certainly, once again, the uh, patient engagement portal. So just to kind of wrap it all up as far as UpDocs Pharmacy Connect, once again, we really want to try to help you uh, make it a much easier stepping stone into this clinical services world. We realize you're running a very uh, successful and busy retail operation, uh, so you have to find that balance of how to do some of these more uh, structured, engaged sessions that might take a little bit longer with the patients that offer tremendous value. Uh, so we want to give you the tools to be able to help facilitate that in a more efficient manner. And as we talked about, just trying to uh, help improve the internal processes. And then finally, uh, be able to engage with those physicians and prescribers in your community at a different level um, where you're really going back and forth about the clinical information, 
beyond just the simple medications, which are very critical and important to the patient, but be able to share some of the other clinical findings that you're discovering when you're meeting with them uh, for the betterment of the patient. And then finally, help you engage more patients in your community is really what we're trying to do with Pharmacy Connect. Um, we have our white paper. You can also talk with us. Uh, we will field your questions if it is for Sean or if it is for Shelly. Um, and you can also contact our sales department directly with all of the information on the screen um, if you'd like to learn more. So I'd like to conclude today's webinar by thanking Sean Ramsey and Shelly Spiro so, so very much for taking time out of their busy schedules. Thanks, everyone.